everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my Disney audition experience. It's been a long time coming. I've been talking about it for a while and I'm finally here to share all the hot goss and details with you guys. Of course, as always, if you aren't, please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Fun fact, 92% of you are not subscribed and being subscribed would really help out my channel. So thank you so much and be sure to give this video a big thumbs up as well. But anyway, I want to talk about my Disney audition experience, what I wore, what I did my makeup like, who I got chosen for, what people were like, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun because I know a lot of people really want to audition for Disney one day and it's a lot of people's dream to be like a Disney princess or to be in a parade or something like that. So I hope that this video can help you and I hope that I shed some light on some of your questions and if you have any more, be sure to leave them in the comments down below because I try to respond to every comment I get so I will definitely try to respond to your comment and your question. I also was thinking about doing another video about how I did my makeup for a Disney audition because this is not how I would do it at all. So if you're interested in that, I'd also love to do that. Just leave me a comment down below and I'd be happy to make that video. And also leave me your suggestions for other videos you'd like to see on my channel, um, especially now that we're here in Orlando and can do some more theme park and other videos like that. But anyway, guys, let's start talking about auditions. <laughs> so first I auditioned, I started auditioning in 2014. Um, I just realized I'm not wearing my ring or earrings, but whatever. <laughs> I started auditioning in 2014 and I auditioned until about 2017, which is when I stopped auditioning. I got married and was just trying to make a little more money than what they do pay performers. And um, I would go back now and start auditioning again if I could get a job for something that was with Actors Equity. So something that is like singing or um, in the shows so that I would be paid a little bit more of a livable wage for myself. But I think that my audition time was really fun and obviously at the time it was my dream to be a Disney princess and to be a character performer. But sadly that dream did not come true, but hey, that's okay. I still got to have fun while doing it and I still got to put on the costume, which was pretty awesome. So um, pay for princesses is typically starting at like $12, at least it was when I was auditioning in 2014. So it might be a little bit different now. I know Disney is increasing their minimum wage to $15 an hour um, within the next couple of years. So it'll probably go up more for character performers because they do get paid a little bit higher than like regular cast members who are in like food and beverage roles and things like that. But actors equity roles get paid a lot more money because they're protected under actors equity and um, they're, they're performers. So they get paid usually around $25 or more per hour. So pretty nice job if I do say so myself <laughs> and I've never even done it. Yeah, so I was auditioning in 2014, which was right after Frozen. So obviously the Frozen sisters were in high demand. I mean, they still are, they're super popular. So I was chosen four times to be friends with Princess Anna. I think if I had continued, maybe I would have gotten chosen for others, but Anna was what I got picked for pretty much at every audition I went to. And out of those four auditions, I got put into costuming twice, which is like the final step, which I'll explain in a second. But <laughs> you don't really get to pick. Um, they pick for you which character they think you look like. And um, I, I had pretty much figured I was gonna get fitted for Anna because I get told a lot that I look like her. I was just happy with any princess I was going to be able to get. I was practicing like my impressions for all of the characters because I didn't know who they were going to put me in. So yeah. <laughs> so every audition is very different and I went in total to probably about 15 different auditions and something that really bothered me when I was at them was the number of girls who would tell me if you've been to that many auditions you're never going to get it because there were so many girls there who and like I saw them and they didn't get picked and in a couple of years they ended up being the media for like Rapunzel and even at my first fitting for Anna I was with my friend now who she got fitted at the time for Snow White and after a couple of months of her continuing to audition she actually got chosen to be Anna after that she um, was doing friends with Anna for like two years and then she ended up getting some other characters down the road so there's really no telling when you're gonna get chosen it just might not be the right day. They might not be looking for the character that you look like. And I I really suggest if it is your dream to just keep going and to keep persevering because you never know. And I've had, like, I've, like I said, I've seen many people who did not get picked at a certain audition who ended up being really successful down the line. So there's no telling when you're going to get chosen. And I just feel like don't give up and, and keep persevering. And it might not even be the right time in your life. Like I feel like now I might have a better chance of getting picked because I've kind of 
grown into my body more and grown into my look more. I know how to do makeup better. You never know. You never know what could happen. <laughs> Each Disney audition experience is completely different. And if you'd like to see what auditions are available, you can go to DisneyAuditions.com. Of course, right now with the pandemic, it's probably not likely that they're hiring for a ton of roles. I know they are hiring for uh, something opening up where they're looking for new performers. I can't remember exactly right now off the top of my head. Probably once like meet and greets are back and parades are back and shows are back, they'll probably be doing more auditions. So that is where I found all the information was DisneyAuditions.com. And each of the auditions will have listed what type of audition they are doing. So it might be a lookalike, which is probably the most common audition and the one that I went to the most. There's also like dance auditions, which I'll tell you the story about that, but I look like a fish out of water at that audition. And they also do like singing auditions um, for like Beauty and the Beast live on stage, The Little Mermaid. Um, they also do like special events. So they might need singers for that. They also do Voices of Liberty auditions, candlelight processional auditions. So there's all kinds of different auditions, but I would say the most popular is the lookalike auditions. The ones that they hold the most often are lookalike auditions. Basically for all of the auditions, it doesn't matter which one it is. They pretty much are all held at the same facility, which is right behind Animal Kingdom. It's not a secret. You can find it on the Disney auditions website, the address, but it's a beautiful building. It is the costuming building for anybody who is who works in Animal Kingdom. So that's where they go for any of their uniforms, costumes for cast members in the park. And in the back behind the costuming building is the audition audition building. It's all the same building, but it's like kind of in the back. And you go down this long hallway and it depends when you get there. Sometimes the line is really long. Sometimes the line is really short. It also depends on what day it is um, and how many people are able to make it to the audition. And you basically walk into this huge room. It's really big. <laughs> and um, on the walls are so many beautiful pieces of artwork, like from, well not artwork, but like pieces from different shows. There's like a Lion King piece, if I can remember correctly, and all this other stuff up on the walls that you can take a look at. And it's really cool. And you start to really feel the magic and you're like, oh my gosh, I might be in one of these shows one day. And um, there's huge mirrors on one of the walls, which is pretty standard, I feel like for like any audition facility. And there's a table. And when I went, you had to fill out paperwork, which they don't really do anymore. Now you do it online before you go. So I, I'm sure they still have paperwork there for anybody who doesn't fill it out beforehand. But now you can fill out the paperwork before, but um, it's basically just, you know, your height, your, do you have any tattoos, any piercings? Have you worked for Disney before? And what was your ID number? Um, I'm trying to think what else they asked. Are you available full-time, part-time, or seasonal? Your shoe size, your, I don't think they asked like clothing size or anything like that, but they definitely asked shoe size. I think that's pretty much it. But you fill out all that paperwork, obviously your name and stuff too, your address, your phone number, your email address. Fill out all that paperwork, you get assigned a number, which I still have all of my numbers, and you put that number on your chest so they can see it very easily. You basically just wait for your time to be called. And in this time, my favorite thing to do was to bring a book because a lot of the girls that I met were not the kindest. And I think that talking to some of these girls can really hurt your self-esteem before you go into the audition. Some of them were awesome and I'm still friends with them to this day. I added them on Facebook and Instagram and we still keep in touch. Some of them were just, you're evil. I'm not even gonna lie to you. They would tell me, you're too tall. You have too much acne. I can see your acne. Um, yeah, they're not gonna pick you. They're not looking for that today. And then I would get picked and they wouldn't and it would be kind of funny. <laughs> There's just a lot of girls that go who think they know everything and who want to be like the boss for some reason, which I don't really understand. So I just really liked taking a book and kind of zoning myself out because I did not really want to talk to anybody. Some of those memories are too cold for me. So I don't really enjoy talking to some of the girls there, but a lot of people like read a book, are on their phone, stretching. I don't recommend being on your phone because the, the people who are auditioning are literally watching your every single move. If they see you taking selfies, or taking pictures. They really don't like that because it's supposed to be like a private thing. It's supposed to be like you're keeping character integrity. They don't really want you posting about it on social media unless you're being safe with character integrity and, and being backstage essentially. So I recommend not being on your phone. I, I pretty much put it in my pocket or in my bag and didn't take it out until the end of my audition experience. And I only had to take it out once when I was in costuming to tell my mom like that I was going into costuming and I needed some more time because she was waiting to pick me up. But after that, I went to pretty much all of them by myself. I recommend not being on your phone. Some girls did be on their phone, did be on their phone <laughs> and um, were like on Instagram or whatever. But I, I tended to avoid it. And a, a lot of the times just stretched or read my book or did have conversations with some people. But I feel like once you have a conversation with one person, 
it's like pretty much over like more girls join your group and then more people are talking and more people are talking and some of them are nice and some of them are not so nice like i said earlier so it just depends on what you like to do <laughs> in the room there's not a lot of chairs there's like one row of benches which pretty much only parents sit in like the parents who are with their kids at the audition and everybody else pretty much just sits on the floor and you basically just sit there and wait until your number is called and you get to go into the first phase so before i get into the first phase let's talk about what to wear and what to, how to do your makeup and your hair so first off hair put it up <laughs> like very simple put it up don't leave it down if you get chosen you're going to be wearing a wig anyway so they don't care about your hair they only care about your face and your body so your face i recommend very natural makeup is what worked for me best and like i said i'm happy to do that video if you would like me to do like my makeup routine for how i did my looks when i went to the parks and i'd be happy to share that with you as far as clothing goes i definitely would say very form-fitting clothing i would wear like um yoga pants basically not pants but they're kind of like yoga capris um or leggings leggings are really good and i kind of wore like a flowier shirt but i wore a tank top underneath so that they could still see like my form because unfortunately it is important to uh have a specific body type for these auditions because they're trying to make you look like a cartoon character so they do want to see your body and see how well you resemble that character basically um very form-fitting clothes is what i would suggest but something that you can very well move around in um because you're gonna be doing dancing charades things like that so yeah that's how i would suggest it and um that's what worked for me so the next step of the audition after you get your paperwork filled out and after you've been waiting in the room is they call a certain set of numbers so they'll say number one all the way through number like i think they did in like 50 so one through 51 or something like that so you're sitting there waiting for a while if you're like a little bit farther back it's no big deal <laughs> it's just, i feel like that's standard for every audition that i've been to um inside and outside of disney but you're waiting for a while and um once you go into this room if you're lucky enough to be in the first group um once you go into this room the first thing that they do usually for lookalikes is they line you all up in a room in like a row so they'll be like a row of like 10 say so they'll be like five rows of 10 for a group of 50 and they will just have you look right at the person who is auditioning casting the audition and they will basically just stare at you very uncomfortably for a long amount of time and they'll go down the line and they'll look at you they might write some notes and then they'll go to the next person how i did it was you want to make sure you have the biggest eyes possible and a big smile it's very uncomfortable <laughs> but <laughs> that is how I found it to work. The biggest thing is they don't want you to have small eyes. So if you're going, they're not going to like that. They want... Am I going to launch your nightmares tonight? <laughs> So big eyes, big smile. They're looking at your face and basically deciding what characters you look like. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable, <laughs> but that's what they do. And they'll look through all the girls and then they will read some numbers. So the numbers here are usually the ones who are chosen to go on to the next step. And then everybody else, unfortunately, does not make it to the next step. And usually at this point, if you get picked, you get put to the side with the other girls who got picked while they finish the rest of the numbers who still need to audition. And if you haven't been picked yet, and you're sitting in the big room waiting to go in it is so sad to see all the girls come out with a look of shame and the walk of shame because you didn't get picked i've had to take that walk many times before and it is very sad and uncomfortable but it is what it is it's an audition they can't pick everybody once you make it to this step this is where things were different for me for every audition but usually you would do either like a dance routine or you would do a charades routine and one time i even they even just had us all stand together and she came Came around and asked us questions and then had us turn and looked at our profile which was like my biggest fear because i have the worst side profile ever like i have a horrible double chin and now i've learned that this is my resting face but if you put your tongue to your mouth it sucks it in so now I know that secret for next time. <laughs> just in case any girls are like me and you have the curse of the fatty neck. I'm just saying that's worked for me. Every audition is different when it comes to this. What I've seen, the movement routine, which is like a dance routine, is usually very simple, like a couple of steps. And it's just basically to see how well you can move, how graceful you are, or how much, like how well you could do in like a parade or something like that. And the charades portion is really 
fun. I don't think it's called charades. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but I think both times I did it, we had the same prompt, which was that you're bury, you're digging for burying treasure. And you can't talk, obviously, it's charades, because they want to see how well you can do it if you're in a costume that doesn't talk, if you are doing fur character or something like that. So you'll like <sighs> wipe the sweat off your face and then you'll uh, struggle to dig in a hole. And then once you find your treasure, <gasps> On my treasure and when i went at this particular audition i thought i was gonna get chosen to be friends with Belle, so i chose a rose so i had a rose and i <gasps> took it out of the box and i oh it smells so sweet and then they usually count you down so then they count you down and you do a finishing pose so i held my rose and had my hand out like a princess and that's basically just what i did but obviously you don't know who they're gonna like what they're gonna pick you for so you can pick anything you can pick a big box of treasure you can be burying for a necklace you can be burying for a map there's a you know you can go in whatever direction you want to go in but and there's other uh movement or charade routines as well so they might give you a different prompt but that was my experience personally with that. I also went to another experience, an audition experience where it was a complete dance audition where they had us literally do a routine that I had no idea what I was doing. They're like, okay, and step ball change here. And I don't even know the correct terminology because I haven't done dance in years and years and years, but they were just telling us all these things that I had no idea what I was doing. So I was looking at the people around me because this was like a serious, this was like a specifically dance routine for like the ballroom waltzers for um, Mickey's Not So Scary Parade and the ballroom waltzers again for the Very Merry Christmas Party, um, Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade. It wasn't like simple like face character and like parade like just waving to people routine. This was like serious dancing and it said it in the audition but I just went just because I wanted to see how well I could do and needless to say I looked horrible and I did not get big but it was fun to experience I guess. <laughs> I also did a few singing auditions so there there was like a Beauty and the Beast one, a Little Mermaid one, and then a, a couple Frozen ones because at this time they were having special Frozen events. And I think I did a Voice of Liberty one. I actually don't think I did because for Voices of Liberty, you have to be able to read sheet music, which I unfortunately am not very good at. I can do like a little bit, but not a lot. Basically for these auditions, it was a lot different because for these height was very particular because there's specific, you know, like costumes that you have to wear for these shows. And like Ariel gets picked up by Eric at the end and it's very very specific and I'm pretty tall I'm like five seven and a half and like the height requirement is five seven so like I was like right on the edge and I was so terrified and at these auditions like the first thing that they usually do is have a height stick right where you uh, are filling out your paperwork and they measure you right then and there and I was so terrified I would always like try to slouch and he'd be like please stand up straight I'd be like okay sorry and for some reason they always measured me shorter like even though I'm like five seven five eight they measured me like five five and a half which I was like, I'll take it. But I was very, very confused. I've heard this from a lot of people actually that they get measured for shorter than what they actually are. I don't really know like if that's still the case, but that was just how it was for me. Then like if you didn't meet the, the height requirement, you were automatically kicked out. So I made it past that height, height requirement. A couple of auditions down the road, I didn't make it past the height requirement, which is funny to me because I was like, I haven't changed um, the my height. <laughs> so um, yeah, but that was just, my experience personally so it, I guess it just depends on how tall you are but for these auditions like all character performers can go like girls who are already doing meet and greets and stuff like that at the park so there were a lot of people who were already character performers and had a lot more experience than I did and they made it a lot further than I did but usually for these auditions that are like singing auditions you go with like some sheet music and um, some singing prepared for these particular auditions for lookalike auditions you don't have to worry about singing because meet and greet characters do not sing in the park so if you're worried about singing don't worry about that because it really does not matter. Anyway, putting all of this together, like with all the different auditions, at the end of my lookalike auditions, two times I made it to costuming, which was the coolest experience in the world. <laughs> the first time, so both times I was fitted for Princess Anna from Frozen, and the first time they did not have any dresses. I think they had one and another girl was wearing it. So I would just wore like a plain black dress and obviously had the wig and the makeup. And I remember just looking in the mirror 
and I was like, oh my god, I actually like look at, I actually look like her because everybody had told me it. Like at the time, I didn't think so, and like I looked in the mirror, I was like taken aback by myself for a second. But they put you in makeup and the wig and costuming, depending on what they have available at the time, and they basically give you a little script and you read it for the casting directors. Sorry, my nose is so itchy. And they pull you aside with like an acting coach before you go in to meet with the casting directors and she kind of gives you some tips and some advice and helps you work on the inflection of your voice and it's a very very short script let me see if i can remember <clears throat> i'll try to get into character for you guys it was something like okay i think i remember <clears throat> hi i'm anna princess anna of arendelle you're here for my sister's coronation right oh, oh sorry coronation right <laughs> my sister looks beautiful -er. i mean not fuller she doesn't look fuller just more more beautiful <laughs> have you seen olaf around i think he's been running around with his snowman friends something like that i don't remember the exact script but it was something really cute and really fun and really easy and the casting directors like laughed they thought it was really good so i don't know what i messed up and why i didn't get picked but it was really cool to get to do that and they have a uh, camcorder recording you because they basically want to make sure that you look similar to other people that they're casting around the world so at like disneyland disneyland paris things like that they want to make sure that character integrity is staying intact because basically how they explain it at the audition is if a little girl is going home at the end of the night of her Disney vacation and in the morning she had breakfast at Cinderella's royal table and met Cinderella and Rapunzel and Snow White and then later on in the day at Magic Kingdom she went and met Rapunzel and she's flipping through the pictures on her iPad they want to make sure that she doesn't look at them and she's like wait Rapunzel looks completely different obviously Rapunzel is gonna look a little bit different because we're different people we all look different but they want to make sure that they are as similar as possible and there are specific features facial features that they are looking for in each of the girls that they pick so they have this quick camcorder set up to make sure that everybody's looking the same um or similar I should say because we're not all gonna look identical and they record your auditioning experience and then they say thank you for your time we'll get back to you if you make it and then you leave uh, well you don't leave they like take off some of your makeup and your wig and you change you know obviously and at this point they are very strict with the no phones if you take out your phone you're automatically kicked out from the audition because you can't obviously sit there and take selfies of you wearing the costume and wearing the wig it just does not protect character integrity and even when you are a character in the parks you can't just be in the locker room like taking selfies with the wig and everything else on well I mean you can but you can't post them I've heard some rumors so if you've made it past the step in the process let me know when you first go into the room the casting director has you state your name uh, to the camera and I'm pretty sure this is a test so if you've done this let me know because I'm curious because I would always say hi my name is Marissa Pareda at the time I wasn't Marissa Pat hi my name is Marissa Pareda I am 19 years old at the time and I am here to audition for the role of Princess Anna I'm pretty sure this was a test I'm pretty sure when they ask you to state your name you're supposed to say hi I'm Princess Anna I'm here to audition today and I'm so excited to be here or something like that pretty sure you're supposed to stay in character I, I could be completely wrong but if I ever do go to auditions again I will probably do that and then if they say oh no like your your real name then I would probably say oh okay it's Marissa Breda I'm 19 years old and you know blah 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 but um I don't know let me know what you think down below if you've done this and if it's helped you in any way because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what they're looking for is for you to stay in character which I never did because I thought oh they're asking me my name for this camcorder I was super nervous so I just did it but I don't know so let me know let me know in the comments down below and then my second costume fitting that I went in for again was for Princess Anna and this time I actually got to wear the dress um the dress was like a little bit too small for me but I was like I'm gonna squeeze into that sucker I don't even care and they had a pair of boots that were size six and a half and I am eight and a half and I was like you know what I'm gonna squeeze into those too so I squeezed into the boots and I looked in the mirror and I was like oh my gosh this is the coolest thing ever I look like a princess I actually look like her and it was so much fun and again this experience was the same exact thing I read the exact same script it was a lot of fun after the audition um you get an email mine both times said I was not picked sadly I'll put the email here actually I still have it if you want to see what it looks like but um yeah so I got rejected both times which is fine I would love to go back and do it again maybe like I said for like um a, a, like a performance role um so we'll see i don't know what my my future looks like but disney if you're hiring i would love to audition for you again anyway guys that's pretty much all i can think of to say about my disney audition experience so like i said if you have any comments leave them down below and i'd be happy to answer them for you guys and i hope that you're having a wonderful week if you want to audition do it girl or guy make your dreams come true and just have fun with it and enjoy the experience and enjoy the ride and don't get frustrated after a couple of tries because like I said so many people 
not have tried and tried and tried and get it after a few auditions. Don't give up, be persevering and have fun. And I love you guys. Please be sure to subscribe to see more Disney and Universal and Orlando videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.